In the western basin of Lake Erie, the post-spawn period is one of those critically important times to be on the water. Immediately following their spawning cycle, walleye put on the feed bag, and the stage is set for not only catching limits of fish, but tons of trophy class eyes to boot. This week on Fishing 411 TV, Mark and Jake travel to the Ohio waters of Lake Erie to test out the precise walleye crank, or PWC for short. Mark and Jake recently designed this crankbait for the Bill Lewis Company, especially for anglers who can't get enough of Lake Erie's trophy walleye fishery. Trust us, the PWC will soon be a Lake Erie staple among avid walleye trollers. <laughs> I don't know, man. Beautiful sunrise. I haven't even got all my boards in the water, and I got a fish on already. That is a beautiful thing. Welcome to Lake Erie. This is the reason we travel so much in the spring of the year is to go to some of the world-class fisheries. In Lake Erie in April, you just can't beat it. It is unbelievable. There's an amazing amount of fish to be caught and high quality fish. And the focus for today is gonna to be crankbait trolling. And uh, we're gonna spend an awful lot of time pulling crankbaits, using inline planer boards, trying to target. What we're gonna to see today, hopefully, is a mix of pre-spawn fish and post-spawn fish. Because not all walleye spawn at the same time. In, uh, in early April to mid-April, you're gonna see a mixture of fish. You're gonna see some fish that have spawned out, and you're gonna see some fish that have not spawned yet. So. Um, today, hopefully, there's going to be a pretty even mix of both of those. Literally, I'm just trying to get set up. I got one rod out is all I've gotten out so far. <laughs> We're just close because right this direction. is my short lead. Um, normally, on my outside line, I would run my shortest lead, and that's what we have right here. It was only 30 foot back, and this is a, a PWC. It's a new crankbait made by Bill Lewis, and this thing was is definitely close. I'm going to go on this side over here, Jakers. <laughs> nice fish. Very nice fish. I can keep him coming here for you. Coming just like that. Nice. That's not a bad way to start the day. Huh? That's a really good way to start it. Oh my goodness, he was barely hooked. He popped off the bait already. Just as uh, expected, this is a pre-spawn walleye. And you can tell because there's no marks on the fin. When they're spawning, they get all beat up on their fins and stuff, and they get red marks on their fins. So this is a nice, clean fish. Has not been up on the reef yet. Is about to go spawning. 
to me that's the coolest thing about the time of year that we're at right now it's a very special time where we have that mixture of pre and post spawn fish out here and you have a chance of a fish at a lifetime you got to do it in the pre-spawn stage because once they spawn they lose a lot of weight and they start getting really beat up so hopefully we put our hands on a really big fish but that is a really good way to start a morning. Not a bad start. You know one of the most important things I think when you come out to Lake Erie is being mobile. It's such an important aspect to this game. We actually came out here the day before and we pre-fished and we got on some really nice fish. But guess what happened? They moved and that is very, very common out here on Lake Erie, especially when you're talking about catching pre-spawn fish. Right now we're getting a mixture. There's a mixture of pre and post-spawn fish in the system. Um, but what happens is they're constantly moving. They're not really looking to eat, they're looking to spawn. And so these fish, there we go. Hey, 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 thanks, Dad. And so these fish, really aren't sitting in one area like what's common in the summer where you can go back to a spot time and time again. It's very common to catch them one day and come back the very next day and they're gone. So you have to be mobile, you have to move around and that's exactly what we did this morning. Our fish moved, we moved around, got right back on another pot of fish. The nice thing about Lake Erie is there are a lot of fish out here. Keep them coming just like that, Dan. Yep, nice. there you go. A little bit smaller size than what we've been looking at today, but you're gonna get a good mixture of size class out here on Lake Erie, and they're gonna keep you busy. But like I was saying when I was fighting that fish that I think is so important, be mobile. Trust your electronics. If you're not marking fish, they're gone. They left, and it's time to go look for some more fish. So be mobile, and you'll land on them. Special considerations provided by Abyss Battery. Power your pursuit. Special considerations are provided by the Ultimate Sports Show Tour, Michigan's premier sports shows. I love it when the flag goes down. Oh, baby. That is a good feeling. Oh, man. Those of us that live up here in the Great Lakes, um, you have to take something into consideration. A day like today where it's flat out here on Lake Erie, it's just a blessing because these are rare days. I mean, realistically, in an entire year, we don't get only but a handful of days like this. And so it puts a big smile on my face when I know that we've got calm weather. Because not only is it easier on your body, it means if we have to run around and look for fish today, we can do it. And so it makes you mobile as a fisherman. And uh, that's a beautiful thing. This looks like a, a good quality fish. Yeah, it's a nice fish. This is not going to be a, a, a giant here, but it's a, definitely a good quality fish. I'll keep her coming here. I keep her head down in the water there. Maybe we can land her without her ever even knowing that she's in trouble. Thanks, fish dad. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> oh, poor girl. Well, that's a pretty nice looking little fish right there. <laughs> If you're looking at that crankbait, that is a PWC. If you don't recognize the color, it wouldn't surprise me. It's a custom color that a friend of ours, Kelly Schmidt here from Port Clinton is painting, um, irregardless charters. And uh, so that's a custom color, but uh, the fish seem to like it. Man, what a beautiful fish. You know, if you're coming out to the Port Clinton, Ohio area, and the reason why we come out to Port Clinton a lot is because there's the islands here and there's the reef complexes here on Lake Erie. This is the area where a lot of walleye do their spawning out here on the Lake Erie system. And if you're coming out here, there's a couple things we're looking for um, when it comes to catching these fish. One is the obvious, right? I'm always looking at my graph, I'm trying to mark fish. I want to know that there's fish underneath the boat. But the truth of the matter is, is this is Lake Erie and there are a lot of fish in this system. So there's gonna be a lot of times that you are gonna mark a lot of fish, but those fish might not necessarily bite. Because the next thing that I'm looking for is probably the most important part of this entire piece. And that's the water color. When you come out here in the spring, you're gonna find water that's super clean. You're gonna wa find water that's super dirty. And you're gonna find that in between water. A lot of times we might find a lot of fish in that dirty water, but we just simply can't get those fish to bite with any consistency. So I'm Honestly, what I'm looking for is that nice in-between water, that water that's got a little bit of color in it, and that's pretty much ideal. So not only am I driving around looking for fish on my sonar, on my graph, but I'm also constantly looking at that water color, because that's going to tell me on any given day, are those fish going to bite or are they not? And the case is, and when you find yourself in dirty water, a lot of times it's just simply hard to get those fish to bite. So we constantly drive around and look for clean water, and that's exactly what we found today, is a nice pocket of clean water out here in Port Clinton 
and these fish are absolutely chewing. Go ahead and release the planer board. Now I'm just pulling directly against the fish. I'm not pulling against the planer board itself. I'll get that big clicker off there because no one wants to listen to that click, 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 trust me. But I feel really passionately about the ability to release planer boards. And I guess it's not for everybody. Some people don't want to do it and they're not going to change. But in my opinion, most of the people who are uh, talking about not wanting to replace or not wanting to release planer boards are folks who haven't tried it. It's really kind of that simple. And uh, once you've tried it, it becomes very intuitive to do, uh, very successful. It allows you to stack multiple boards per side. We're going to be able to fish today with three lines on each side. We'll never have to reel a board in or move a board in order to fight a fish. Now that's a beautiful thing. Makes you a more efficient troller. He's barely hooked, Jakers. Barely hooked. I don't want to put too much pressure on him. Keep him coming just like that. Nice fish. <laughs> He's a little bigger than I thought he was. Yeah, and he watched that bait just pop right off in the landing net there. He I tell you what, he was pretty barely, good. barely hooked. I can see that that treble hook was just in the corner of his jaw. All right, we'll get her out of the net and bring her up and show her off. Another beautiful fish. And that one's clean. Again, no marks on the fish, so I'm confident in saying that that's a pre-spawn walleye. Hasn't moved up on the reefs to spawn yet, so that's the reason we're releasing all of our fish today, is that while there are a lot of walleye in Lake Erie, uh, still feel strongly we ought to let them spawn. And then after they spawn, well, then maybe that's the time to put them on the dinner table. But this one's going back. Special considerations are provided by the Lake St. Clair Walleye Association and by Stryker Brands. Go early, go late, go prepare. Special considerations are provided by Fish Hawk Electronics. Fishing without a fish hawk is called boating. Yeah, baby, look at that. Woo! Travelite Truck Campers presents the 411 on fishing. You know, crankbaits like this are great fishing tools. We catch an awful lot of fish with them, but eventually what's gonna happen if you fish a crankbait long enough, it's gonna get knocked out of tune. And what I mean by that, when a crankbait is in the water and you're pulling it or trolling it, it should dive and come straight at you. Well, eventually what ends up happening is this little tiny wire down here, we call it the pull point, it'll get bent a little bit, it'll get tweaked. And then what happens is instead of that lure diving and coming straight at you, it's gonna fade a little bit to the left or it's gonna fade a little bit of right of center. And that's a problem. And the reason that's a problem is because a crankbait will dive to its natural depth when it's coming straight at you. If it's not coming straight at you, it's no longer diving to its true depth. It also loses some of its action. So you really have to tune your crankbaits in order to keep them running effectively. And historically, people have done this with a pair of needle nose players, but I'm here to tell you there's a better solution. I'm gonna put that down for just a second, and I'll hold up here what's called an easy crankbait tuner. And this is a product that's produced by Offshore Tackle, and as you can see, it's a style of player, but it's got a long jaw and it's got a short jaw, but more importantly what it has it's a tension adjustment here. So what we can do, and I'll show you in a second how it works, when we put it on the crankbait and we make it an adjustment, we can make very, very small adjustments to the pull point. And the reason this is important is because if you bend the pull point too far, you're gonna destroy the crankbait entirely. You're gonna make it run way to the right or way to the left. So you have to make very precise bends to the pull point. And the easy crankbait tuner makes that happen. What I like to do is take the long jaw and put it right up against the lip of the crankbait, put the short jaw on the pull point, and now I'm gonna squeeze. You hear that click? What happens is the slip jaw allowed me to make a very small adjustment to the pull point. Now I can change that by either tightening it to make a bigger adjustment or loosening it to make a smaller adjustment. The beauty of this is that I can tune any crankbait from a large musky style crankbait all the way down to small ones that you would use for crappie and pan fishing. So once I've made my adjustment, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna tie it on my fishing pole, throw it out, reel it in and see what's happening. Now, if it's still going left, I can bend that pull point a little bit to the right. If it's running right, I can bend that pull point a little bit to the left. It's a trial and error process, but eventually you'll get it so that it's running perfectly straight. Once that crankbait is running perfectly straight in the water, the action in the crankbait is gonna get more lively, it's gonna dive to a deeper depth, and it's gonna catch you more fish. So if you fish crankbaits, you really do need an easy crankbait tuner to make the job easier for you. More time fishing, less time tuning. I'm fish bit right in the middle of a turn. 
So we're gonna have to get that fish to swing all the way around now. That's okay, we're trolling forward. And to me that tells me a picture. We're trying to figure these fish out. One of the things we're dealing with today is this absolutely glass calm. I'm not complaining because it's beautiful out here. But one of the things when you deal with glass calm, I think it's really important to kind of zigzag as you're driving around. Don't just troll straight for a long time because what you do when you do that, you're slowing your speed down, you're speeding your speed up now. My inside board's there. That fish just went on that turn on the inside board. So it tells me maybe I need to slow down a little bit. We've been playing with speed. But all of these things are telling us stuff. So, and just like that, we got a double going here, Dad. Tell you what, you take this one, which oh, is the first one, Dad. Give me the one that's half fought out, huh? This one's a <laughs> lot bigger, so. <laughs> well, you're gonna eat crow on this one, because uh, I'm gonna make this one bigger. <laughs> double down. But so. again, it was on that turn, and, uh, and everything kind of slowed down on that side. So that's telling me maybe I need to slow my speed down a little bit. All of this stuff paints a picture, but. I promise you I got the bigger of the you, two. You think so? I know I do. Well, what we'll be able to demonstrate here is uh, you can take your own planer boards off. You don't have to have somebody else do it. We typically, you know, let the other guy take the board off for us, but it's not necessary. You can just reach up here, grab it, take it off, and go right back to fighting the fish. So it's not that big a deal. So if you're fishing by yourself, maybe pre-fishing for a tournament or something, uh, you can take the board off yourself. It's not that big a deal. Now we've got to figure out how to get these fish to dance without getting tangled here, Jake. Well, it looks like yours wants to go this way and mine wants to go this switch way, so here. we're going to switch spots. And mine's actually a really long lead. I ran a deep lead out okay, there. Okay, well then that's good. We'll be able to land this one first then. So, so this is a small this fish, so as you had predicted, it's a small fish. So I'm going to I'm gonna net him myself so you can stay on top of your fish, Jake. Small fish, look at this. I'm complaining that a four pound walleye is a small walleye. <laughs> See if I can get him out of the net here quick. I'm just going to keep nice steady pressure on this one, Dad. He's staying down really nice. All right, Dad, I'm going to keep her coming just like this. She's staying down. About 10 feet back, she's straight below the boat. Nice fish, Perfect. Dad. That's Very a double nice head for you right there. A Lake Erie Classic. Well, that's what we mean with small fish, big fish. Lake Erie, boy, it'll spoil you really quick because both of these are really nice fish. This is a little bit bigger, and so and we had a double, and actually, you know, I have another one hanging on there now, too. Very common in the springtime. You hit these pods of fish, and it's all hands on deck, and uh, literally all three lines on my side of the boat have gone now. Special considerations are provided by Cisco Fishing Systems, your fishing equipment experts. Special considerations are provided by ProCure, ruthlessly effective bait sets. You know, it's interesting because uh, you talk about, people think of walleye fishing, they think, you, you know, the fishing is better when there's a walleye chop, and you know, and in some cases I think that's true, but we're doing very, very well today on glass calm conditions and uh, high sun, warm enough that uh, you can wear a shirt and you know, a t-shirt and, and, uh, and shorts today. That's pretty warm. So. So these walleyes are doing some things that maybe they are uh, not in the walleye handbook. All right, you go down. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'll keep him coming right down this side. I got the uh, net on, the, on my side there, okay. Jakers. I'll grab a net. I'll keep him coming right down this hole right here. He looks like he's buttoned up okay. Oh, that's a good fish too, Dan. Thank you. Nice. Look at that. Another beautiful fish. What a nice grade of walleyes we're catching today. And all of our fish today have come on the same crankbait. This is called a PWC, the Precise Walleye Crank. It's a bait produced by Bill Lewis. Um, it's a bait that Jake and I designed for Bill Lewis Company. And when we were building this bait, what we were looking for is some, cert some certain features. One of the things we wanted is bigger hooks. You'll notice that this bait's got number two hooks on it. Um, and they're wide bend hooks. We lose very, very few fish on this bait. Uh, larger hooks, a lot of us guys have already come to this conclusion, hook walleye and hold them better. The other thing is the action. It's just got a, how do I describe it? A butt kicking, tight rolling action that just drives walleye crazy. Great bait, seems to be doing a great job for us today. Got one hanging on this outside line here, Dad. These fish have been in pods all day today. It seems like you might go a little while and not get any bites and then, oh, just like that. I mean, it's literally like you get one on, and I'm clearing sides when you're on the right pot of fish. 
That's kind of cool though, you can see it the video. I know it's kind of hard to shoot because we're shooting right into the light. But I don't have any lines left on this side of the boat again today. That's happened quite a few times today. <laughs> I'll get this board off and then uh, and maybe I'll reel that, that other one in. This one might actually come off, Dad. So I tell you, you know what? Actually, oh, he's still there. But I tell you what, you can have that one. Obviously, he thinks this is a smaller fish. No, he just had to wake up for a second, but he woke up. So we land these fish and we're right it's going to be smaller. Do the same old thing. You do that to me all the time, Jake. Oh, fathers, they're always giving. We just give, give, and give some more. We did everything wrong and still got him to the boat. Oh, let's see, I'm gonna set this rod in the rod holder quick. Grab the landing net. Grab the landing net. Right there in the hook. Nice fish, fish Dad. All right, I'll nice take fish. this and you go back to your fish. That's a nice fish, man. That's been pulling good. Staying down nice, Dad? Well, let's see, you got about a 23 or a 24 inch of a beat. Uh oh. You might nice have fish. It. You might have it. <laughs> and they're just absolutely inhaling these baits. Closer. Nice. Yeah, I think you got me, my son. We'll, uh, we'll compare here in a second, but I think you got me. <laughs> I'm afraid you did beat me a little bit. That's the second time today you did that to me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, my name is Mark Romanek, and you've been watching Fishing 4 on 1. I hope you had fun learning a little bit about how to catch Lake Erie walleyes on crankbaits. We'll see you same time, same place next week. Closed captioning is provided by Precision Trolling Data. Fishing 411 TV is brought to you by Offshore Tackle, Starcraft Marine, Suzuki Marine, J Sporting Goods, Smooth Move Seats, Niagara Falls USA, Eagle Claw, Bill Lewis, and Yakima Bait Company.